Good afternoon, you're very welcome to Fitzgerald Stadium here in Killarney for this afternoon's Intermediate County Football Final, the Castleline sponsored Mark County Football Final here with Cora and Spa. Run through the teams for you at the moment. Cora line out as follows. In goal, Shane O'Leary. At number two, Daniel O'Sullivan. Number three, Seamus Flynn. Number four is Martin Howard. And at number five is Ian Summers. Number six is James Fleming. And number seven is John O'Connor. At number eight is Johnny McLennan, the captain. Former Kerry player and of course current all-star. At number nine, Seamus Scanlon. At number 10, Paddy Collins. At number 11, John Daly. Number 12 is Pam McCarthy. Number 13 is Jack Dennehy. Number 14 is Daniel O'Shea. And number 15 is John Buckley. Spa, line out as follows. In goal, James Devan. At number 2, Brian Gleeson. Number 3 is Aidan Callan. And number 4 is Fergus Clifford. At number 5 is Brian Russell. Number 6 is Hugh O'Donoghue. And number 7 is Owen Cronin. Number 8 is Andrew Garnett. Number 9 is Kevin Healy. 10 is Conor Gleeson. Number 11 is Pam Murphy. 12 is Niall O'Mahony, the captain. 13 is Keen Tobin, 14 is Mike Lloyd Donahue, and 15 is Tomas Lynch. Joining me this afternoon in the commentary is none other than Ambrose O'Donnell. And Ambrose, your thoughts on this game? Well, I'm looking forward to a very good game. I think these teams have met quite a bit in, in being two East Kelly teams, and there's never no more than one or two points in it. I think both sides have a big effort put in, and under both managers, Sean Mining has done a fantastic job with Spa, and the Jackie Rady has done left no stone on with Colour. So I'm expecting a very, very good game here. And of course, the, the, the thing we must never forget about Kelly teams competing in this intermediate championship. Now there's an All Ireland in it, and the Kelly, whoever wins the Kelly College Championship, goes on to do very, very well in the All-Ireland series, as St. Michael's Fine Mort have proven, and indeed our have proven. So there's a lot at stake, a lot riding into this. They're two very great traditional clubs, and I think, you know, the G is a big part in, in, in both clubs, and I'm looking forward to a great game, John. Looking at the, the game this afternoon, Ambrose, looking at the programme there at the moment, you have a former lot of former county players, of course, Seamus Scanlon still there, Jack Dinehy there, you have indeed uh, looking at Pam Murphy there, from a former Olympic Link car player before he immigrated to America, coming back to play with the spa there, Andrew Garnett, a lot of strong footballers in this team. It promises to be a very good game, good close game, as you said. Never much between the two teams when they meet. No, never never too much between the two teams. I think Spa will look to, to their score and chief, Michael O'Donoghue, better known as Stam, I think, and indeed Niall Mahoney, the captain. And indeed midfield today is going to be a real good battle as well because a Johnny McGlynn captain's score and Shem Scanlon, they're a very, very good midfield pairing. And indeed I will test at the middle of Andrew Garnett and Kevin Healy. So that hinges on that. You look through through the, 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 the core defence that... The, Ian Shem's friend, James Fleming, Ian Summers, they're very good defenders. They're, they're, but they'll have to be at their best because Spa are very, very lively. As you said, uh, Glenn Beglin Carman, formerly Pam Murphy, he was their wing back and he's playing very well in the 40 for Spa. But as you say, an intriguing clash and, and a lot at stake. But um, you, you, I think midfield will edge it. I think Spa will need Andrew Garnett and Kevin Healy to play very, very well. And I think, indeed, we know the capabilities of Shem Scandon and indeed John McGlynn. So here to me is going to be the vital area of the field. And whoever gains a little upper hand there, I think, will be in with a right shout. Brian Russell there, the former Kerry Miner as well there, wearing number five there for, for Spa. Very good footballer, good attacking wing back, Ambrose. He's indeed, and, and, and both flanks, Owen Cronin as well, they, 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 like, they like to attack. But indeed, we look, and we were saying about Ian Summers, you know, that, that he, we, we saw him playing minor football. He's a very, very capable footballer, and a good man coming forward and knows where the posts are. But, uh, you know, you, you look through it, Paddy Collins, John Daly, and Pam McCarthy against Brian Russell, Hugh Dunne, Owen Cronin, that's very even, Stephen. The inside line, Jack Dennehy, Daniel O'Shea, and Johnny Buckley, to me, will test Brian Gleeson. Aidan Cahill and Fergus Clifford. Aidan Cahill is a very good footballer. Fergus has given great service to, to Spa, but you know they'll be well tested here. And the park, I think, will suit Coro. So, like, you know, from, from that point of view, it, it, it's hard to do with Spa. But look, both teams know the park very well, and, and they know each other very well. So, as we said earlier, I'm expecting a close call. Looking at the full forward line there for Spa as well, Keen Tobin there, former Kerry Miner, very fast and elusive player. And of course, you saw Michael O'Donnell who played there with East Kerry that night over. Uh, very elusive type of player, well able to take his scores indeed I suppose, Ambrose maybe looking at it maybe the coming year, definitely man I think they'll probably come into the Kerry panel, will definitely get a, a number of games I think. I would say so yeah, he's been in and out of the, of, the, of the panel up to now but I mean as you say he's a big big player for Spa, he'll have to kick out on nine points for Spa have to have a chance today but as I said there's no problem to him. The other man, the unsung hero here is Tomas Lynch, he's playing very good football for Spa all year, you know we know what Keane Tobin's capabilities are but as you say that's a very dangerous looking line and we'll test the medal of Daniel O'Sullivan, Seamus Flynn and indeed Martin Howard. If you're looking at it though, Ambrose, as you said yourself, the midfield partnership there of Johnny McLean and Seamus Scanlon, Andrew Garner, of course, Kevin Healy, a very, a very good player as well. That middle area of the field, I suppose, as you said yourself, is going to be very important, the winning position, because they both have forward lines, full forward lines capable of taking their scores. 
To have, to have indeed, and, and, and you're dead right, as we, we, we'll revert back to the old one, the diamond, you know, for Spa, you've heard on who, Andrew Gannett, Kevin Healy and Pam Murphy, against James Fleming, John McGlynn, Scanlon and John Daly. This is where the, the game is going to be won and lost for, for, for either side, and I mean, it, it's intriguing. John Daly against Hugh Donohue, you know, I, I wouldn't have much seen a few this year, but I mean, he's played very well for Spa, well, long, very good, tough defender, but I mean, he'll be well tested with, with John Daly. And as we say about our midfield, Johnny McGlynn and Scanlon, I mean, they have enough of, of experience between them, and they're two very good footballers. And Rugan is great in the air, Kevin Healy in the same way. So they're going to be, you know, it's intriguing clashes, Joe. But as, as, as we said earlier, we'll expect the cross game, and I, I'm sure that's what we're going to get. Cara coming out on the field here, and of course, at Connor Farber is Jack Dennehy carrying on the tradition of the Dennehy family in Cara. Of course, Pa, former Kerry player, and indeed his brother Dennis as well, and Mike as well, all played with Cara. And Jack here lining out at Connor Farber this afternoon as the Cara team. Uh, line out just in front for the photograph in front of the stand here. Uh, beautiful day here in Killarney. A bit of a breeze blowing down, I suppose, blowing into the new dressing room, into the ground here at the Fitzgerald Stadium. Uh, Cora uh, with a big panel. Looking at it as well, I suppose, Ambrose, if you wanted, to, if you wanted to, to visualise it, I suppose, you're looking at Seamus Flynn here, the full back as well for Cora. Very experienced player, Seamus Flynn. He's a very experienced player, but, you know, I, I think he's going to be well tested against, uh, against them. I think... Spa will look to Mike Cardonho today. I mean, he's a leader. He's the leader of the team. You know, he has to play well for Spa. Spa to win the game. Mike Cardonho has to be a big contribution. But as you say, Seamus Finn has been around the block. He's played Kerry Minor, Kerry Mzivan. He's been a good Kerry Joner. Good, good, good old style footballer. You know, good old style fullback. He's a big, strong, capable footballer. But um, you know, you, Mike, Mike Cardonho to me, that's an intriguing, that's an intriguing clash as well. Looking at it, uh, Ambrose coming into today's game, Cora playing Division 2, probably were going better than it has been said in by their management. We're going better probably when they beat Listowa Limits in the semi-final, was it? Coming into today's game, they're not carrying the best of form coming into today's game. Spa would have better form coming into the final in recent games. They would, they would, yeah. You'd have to say as well, there's a huge loss for Spa today as Ivor Flynn. You know, he was a big, big footballer. And there's, there's a great testament to, to Sean Mine and Willie Cahill, Mike McAuliffe and John Kelly that kept the Spa team going because, you know, other, other years they might have fallen away. But I think they're stuck to their task and they've done very well in the intermediate. But uh, for me, you know, the, the farm coming into the while well, it means a good bit, today is a final. You know, at the end of the year, there's a big, big prize at the end of this match, and with a view to going on, I think. And if fair play to Sean Kelly, think Sean was the man that introduced this, where, the, where your intermediate champions will go on and represent, you know, Kerry in Munster and then hopefully to All Ireland. And I mean, it is a great, and it is a great prize to have at the end of this thing. You know, it's a great quality dangling front of players. And as I say, our record has been so good when, when teams have come out of this and represented the county intermediate, they've gone on to win All Ireland level. So as you say, there is actually a little bit more. So Farm, while it is good to have Farm come in, Farm will go to win this year because these teams know each other very well from playing each other. They would have played in the league and they would have played in numerous games between Ordon Hook Cups and East Kerr League and MTL. So they know each other very well. And as I say, there's very little between them. But uh, today is the biggest prize of all for both teams this intermediate uh, championship. A lot of people have said, oh, Ambrose, coming in today, would, would the Kerry County Board be better maybe getting the games they like the intermediate? Now we break actually for the national anthem here at the Fitzgerald Stadium. Anthem finishes there. Paul Hayes, the referee from Cairns or Rahalis for this afternoon's County Castle Island Co op Mark County Intermediate Final here in brilliant sunshine here at the Fitzgerald Stadium. The referee will get this game on the way at any moment. I suppose winter time, maybe getting a little bit behind for the sleep. And I suppose Ambrose, you've probably had a sleep in yourself. <laughs> we had indeed, uh, Jordan. The extra hour was greatly appreciated this morning. I think on a bank holiday weekend, it's great to have a bit of a lie in Sunday. But I mean, you know, it's, it's a big test of, 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 of Paul Hayes as well. I haven't seen him up front refereeing. You know, I was very taken last week with, with, with Eddie Welch in fairness from. I'm looking forward to see how, how well Paul handles the, the, the whistle today, Joe. 
All he is indeed from the Cairns Rahalis Club entrally refereeing this uh, county intermediate football final as Curra go down, take up their positions. Uh, Spa, of course, playing the blue and gold, indeed the numbers. Crokes, I suppose, they are the Curra team playing more or less Crokes cause the black and amber here down in front just at the moment. And Curra will attack into the into the dressing room end of the first half here at this county intermediate football final, standing in the middle of the field. You have Johnny McGlenn and Seamus Scanlon. Johnny McGlenn, of course, former Kerry player. I suppose Ambrose, uh, a guy that was probably plagued with injury during his career, really broke his leg at a, a very vital stage of his career. Yeah, he was a very, very good footballer. And as you say, he had a lot of hard luck. You know, I thought Johnny was a fantastic player, very active. And a lot will depend today on Johnny. The ball broken down and right in the centre of the field. Paul Paul Hayes, a free in Coraman. Johnny McGlenn taking the free. McGlenn giving it out here to the out to the terrace side here at the Fitzgerald Stadium. Being picked up by the number 15, the number 15, and for Cora, of course, is John Buckley coming inside. John Buckley going around his man inside. John Buckley with a chance here. Good run from John Buckley. He's fouled going in, but the referee has given the advantage to the player. And a good referee in there by Paul Hayes there, uh, um, Rosen. Good referee, Lord Common Sense. You know, it was no advantage to pull him back. He had impetus with him and he cut through. But I mean, already, you know, he's showing pace in that little corner. You know, and this is the place for pacey footballers, Jeff. The Fitzgerald Stadium in Canary will, if you have pace, this is no better place to, 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 to show it off. And he, he showed a sleep, turn of foot there. And I think. Uh, Brian Gleeson, Brian Gleeson there was uh, well caught there he got inside him indeed uh, I think as you said uh, good referee there by Paul Hayes he left the advantage rather than pulling the player back for a, for a free there and giving him a free he was better off to leave the player develop and that's what uh, has in turn indeed Corrin take the lead here Corrin taking the lead in the very first minute here of this county intermediate football final here at the Fitzgerald Stadium goalkeeper for Spa placing the ball on the 21 yard line for the kick out James Devan James Devan heading back and now beginning his run up to this kick out, kicking it out, out the centre of the field. And the ball calling over towards the stand side of the field. McGlynn goes up, punches it, breaks it down. Trying to go back there is the number seven. First ball, the number seven there is Owen Crone and drives it away down along the line, way inside the 50 yard line, trying to come out for the foul there. Um, on the storm and there that will be a free and a foul and number 15 there Tomas Lynch this will be a free free quickly taken by the number 10 Conor Gleeson over on the stand side a badly taken free the ball has gone out toward the line a waste there he took it inside to Mike Lloyd and they're trying to get him into the game there and Rose with a wasted chance there for, for a spa for a chance of an attack yeah yes indeed I suppose his early days job both teams and team didn't settle really well down yet but um, if there will be mistakes early on we don't expect both sides to settle down but as you said that was a, a bad kick from Conor Going forward there with the ball is Conor Gleeson. First ball trying to work the ball. And uh, Spa walking across, trying to look for a ball inside. Ball given in along the centre. Coraman standing there, the ball coming out here. And being picked up by the number 12. For Curler, the number 12, of course, is Pat McCarthy. Played, of course, with St. Kilns in the county championship this year. Bounces the ball. Turns back to number 5 there from Spa. Challenge there was Brian Russell. Ball has gone loose there. And the Curler sent it out back, pulling in the ball there. Was indeed James Fleming there, but the ball has gone out over the line. It'll be a line ball for Cora. And it's going to be taken by their captain, Johnny McGlenn. Johnny McGlenn, a great servant of Cora indeed, as many others see Mike Galway on his way into the game here this afternoon to see his former club. Ball going back inside, trying to pick it up now for first ball there is Brian Gleeson. Brian Gleeson is pushed and there will be a free out ball. He's signaling for the free. Free quickly taken. Ball out to Brian Russell. Outside the 21-yard line, play down along the line. Into the centre there to the number nine. The number nine first ball is Kevin Healy. Kevin Healy walks it across towards the centre. And walked it there, sent it half back there. Hugh O'Donnell, who gives it away over. There are number 12 there, Nilo Mahoney. The captain as well, going down along. Very good footballer is Nilo Mahoney. Coming forward, the ball going inside the 50. Still Nilo Mahoney making the run. Gives it back, giving it back down to the number 14. Michael O'Donnell, is it Michael O'Donnell? Trying to see that it is indeed the solo runner. Michael O'Donnell, lovely footballer. This is a chance for him on the left. Puts it in, puts it high, and puts it over the bar. Lovely score, Ambrose gentlemen. Great score. I think it's what we've come to, uh, uh, to be. Uh, uh, Looking at Matt Michael, who that's what he's good at, you know, taking the player on, going left, he's left the right foot, which is very, very hard to defend against. But I think Nilo Mahan is shown as well, as well as, 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 as indeed John Buckley showed earlier, he has pace and he will use it and he will run. And I think, I think his mark will cover every blade of grass today in, 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 in Fitzgerald Stadium. The one thing that's noticeable is Stam is making runs out to the corner, you know, and he does that a lot and he does it quite effectively. And they get the ball to him and he'll take the fellow on. And I mean, you know, worrying for, for Kurt at the moment is he took Seamus on there and went by him rather easily, Joe. Three and a half minutes gone, one point each, Barkham, you 
Seamus Cannon, the ball broken away from Seamus Cannon there. See, so went up for the number eight there. Andrew Gannon breaking down with the ball has gone out over the line. It'll be a line ball for Cora Seamus Cannon. This year's all star midfielder takes the ball into the centre into Pam McCarthy. Pam McCarthy coming to gathers the ball going far, being pressurised by Pam Murphy, the former Glimmer Glen car player indeed. Emigrated played with New York in the championship a number of years back and also a, car, a carry minor. Ball broken down the centre, well picked up again for Cora. The Coraman trying to work inside their full forward there, Dan Loche gives it back there to the number eight, McGlynn. McGlynn giving the ball inside, ball broken inside, pulled back there, seemed to be a foul in the Coraman. Chance for the number 10. Oh, brilliant block inside there. There was a chance there. And Conor Gleeson did well there to pick that one up. Brian Gleeson, Luigi, or Ambrose. Yeah, great block. I mean, it had goal written all over. It was a fantastic block by, by Brian Gleeson. But the one thing I'm amazed is that Cora, they're putting the ball in that little bit high. You know, they haven't the biggest players in the world. They would have been far better off maybe to play the low quick ball rather than the high ball. And a push there inside. And Michael, I don't know, this will be a free. And he takes it quickly inside to the number 15. Gathering it there, the number 15, Tomas Stinch, walks it back, gone high and gone in and gone over the bar. And Spaz just said, Ambrose showing lightning pace there and putting the moves together. They are, they're moving the ball very quickly into this full forward line. And as we said, Tomas Lynch is the unsung hero of this team. He's played very, very well all year to date. And I mean, he's showing a good turn of foot there again. But as you say, worrying things for. for uh, Cut at the moment in that full back line is that Keane Tobin, and Michael Gordon and Tomas Lynch are winning ball a little bit too easy for my liking. They're also moving around, they're switching the play there and running after, not staying in the position, they're running to receive the possession, Ambrose. Oh, that's right, you know, and, and the one thing about them is that they seem to know each other, everybody's move, you know, when the, when the half hour line gets the ball, there's immediate action inside from the full forward line, it's nice to see that. Nine ball to be taken by Andrew Gannon, back kick out coming from the corner keeper there, going out over the line. Nine ball taken down inside. Spa showing plenty of initiative in this stack. Michael Dunhu has scored a point already. Dunhu has the ball. Two Coraman trying to place him, trying to keep him out. Still Michael Dunhu works the ball inside. High ball inside. Bad ball really for the forward coming out there. The number 10 there trying to come out for the ball there was Connor Gleeson. The ball is backed up with Spa again. Coming forward there, there's number 12, Nilo Mahoney. Nilo Mahoney has the ball, goes inside the corner. Seamus Friend there. Nilo Mahoney going down. He's pushed in the back there on the free in. Uh, and worrying because the defence seems to be a bit loose, the corner defence. And they're a little bit static as well at the moment, you know, Spa buzzing, you know. They, they, they look to be up for this far as corner. They're waiting for the, they're leaving to the next man all the time. You know, that's a bad way in the county final. They'll have to, there are six backs left to start defending as a, as a number one as a unit and number two playing for each other. You know, there's two fellas went on Michael and Michael I don't know who they are now so by doing that there's always the spa man free so I mean you know, worrying times for Cora at the moment you know, the, the spa seem to have settled more into the game now with, with the last four or five minutes and, and indeed they look to have the ability to, to unhinge this Cora defence Six minutes gone here at the Fitzgerald Stadium this Castle Island Co-op Mark Intermediate Football Final score two points to one in favour of spa Michael I don't know has had a point from play already he will take this one uh, with a chance of his first point from a free this afternoon Michael I don't know with the referee Paul Hayes did up the laces there, getting ready for this kick as he will kick it in to the town interior of the Fitzgerald Stadium. A chance for Mike Lloyd who He might go shot. He does indeed go shot. Gives it back, and this will be a chance for Mike Lloyd who calling it in. And it curls, and in fact, it's been signaled why there. Harsh enough, I thought maybe it probably came in right behind the post when it went behind the post, I suppose, there, Ambrose. Yeah, uh, you'd, have a chance, question, really. you'd have to question going shot from that distance. You know, I'd be for putting it down and going all the way. You know, it was fine if it comes off, but this can happen. You know, I mean, I'd be better off just put it down and put it over the bar. You know, any good free taker. What Especially a kick kicker of Mike Lloyd on his exactly, ability. Yeah, rather than going shot, I think he should have gone the whole way himself and, and, and forget the shot pass from that close in. Shane O'Leary, former carry minor, uh, has the kick out right out to the centre of the field, picked up for Cor over there on the stand side, driven away down. Cor must try and get into this game. That number 13, Jack Dennehy. Jack Dennehy has the ball. Swiggers inside. Those toward the hand ones looking for someone to pass it. Nobody coming loose from him. Gives it inside to Johnny McGlenn. Johnny McGlenn, 55 yards out. Good ball inside, but it was cut out by Pam Murphy. When the number 11 for Spa, but way back in his own defence, Ambrose. Seems to have a defensive duty early on this, the, 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 the first half anyway. Joe, he's playing behind his midfielders and, and behind his half-back line. Going forward again, the number nine there for Spa. Carrying the ball forward is Kevin Healy. And Channing across and back in chance again. Here the number 12 for Spa. Give it out and really uh, plenty of possession here for Spa. Not getting the pass into the hands. Being picked up there by their number 10. Connor Gleason, Connor Gleason walking the ball out. Not being allowed to go in. Chance here coming back. The number 12 driving inside for Spa. But the ball has gone out to the left hand side of the post. The kick coming there from Nilo Mahoney and sending it wide there. Uh, chances, plenty of chances in this game so far in the first seven minutes for Spa. They are, they're being a little bit wasteful, you know. They, they, they've had a couple of very good scoring opportunities down on and have failed to, to, to take them. But one would worry at the moment if you're, if you're a cutter man at the moment. Nile Mahoney seems to have the beating 
of, of, of um, young summers and indeed Stamp seems to be going around Flint too easy for my liking and indeed Tom Lynch as well so I'm sure Jackie will have to, a bit of thinking to on that line with his, with his backroom staff Shane O'Leary breaking the ball and the ball came out from him going forward again and Nilo Mahoney going inside chance to kick here Nilo Mahoney drives it high inside the ball hanging in the air and the Shane O'Leary allows the ball to go wide another wide there First ball, wasteful definitely in the first yeah. eight minutes. Nile, Nile no, Mahoney, I mean, there the, the, the should be two points really. Jolly, you know, being very fair to him, the man, there are two bad misses. I know, I know he's captain of the team and, and he's strong by example, but I mean, you know, he'll have to get his shooting boots on. You, you can't keep, it's not a shooting gallery, you can't keep going kicking wides all the time and expect to win the game. Well, well Cora definitely will have their time of possession, there's no doubt about that. A team of Cora's ability are definitely going to come into this game, so Spa will have to take their chances. When they come their way, Shane O'Leary with the kick out, the ball coming out towards the third side of the field, up there, break a push in the back there by Andrew Garnett on Seamus Cannon there. That is the tactic, they're trying to break the ball away from Seamus Cannon, Ambrose, they're not going to catch with him. No, no, I mean, and I suppose you wouldn't blame them for that, we know Seamus' ability, but Garnett himself is a fair good field, you know, and I mean, you won't catch the ball over Andrew Garnett's head either, John. John Daly put the ball in there, but picked up inside by Aidan Cal, Cal working it out towards the stand side of the field there to their number five. Their number five, of course, is Brian Russell. Brian Russell has it, walking inside now, looking for the pass. Gives it back inside to the centre to Hugh O'Donoghue. Hugh O'Donoghue blocked off there, going out towards the stand side of the field. Went to give the pass there, and the referee quite correctly changed the hand there, and that's a free down. Cora, Seamus Scanlon has it. Scanlon living the ball down. Nine minutes gone here. The ball going to their full forward, Daniel O'Shea. Daniel O'Shea on the stand side. Gives a good ball away inside. Trying to get it off there is their number 15 there, John Buckley. But well done there inside by the cornerback there is Brian Gleeson. Brian Gleeson. And the ball has gone out for a 45 there. Uh, Cora there trying to get. They're playing a low ball in the high ball. Really, they don't seem to have that width in the forwards at the moment. They're not getting the passes together. No, you, you, you'd have to say that, that Spar's build up is, is more positive and more to the point. Cora kind of are looking for fellas to make. Run. You know, there's only, at the moment, there's only Young Buckley inside that for final is making the telling runs. You know, but as I say, if he gets enough of ball in, there's going to be a ding dong battle here between himself and Brian Gleason. Brian is after coming to terms with him. But, but uh, uh, a very interesting duel is, 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 is arising out this game already early on inside that full back line. Ten minutes gone here, this Castle Island Co-op Mark County Intermediate Football Final by two points to one. And this kick will be taken by the number 15 for Cora, John Buckley. What a chance to bring it back to the level up the teams at two points each. John Buckley with this kick, the number 15 for Cora. Coming in, drives it long inside the keeper, looking up. Ball's gone in, gone high and gone super over the back. Kick. That's a very good kick, Ambrose Donovan. A super kick in fairness to him now. It's a great strike of the ball, put it down and confidently struck the ball. Puts it over the bar, the sides are level in this county intermediate final, two points each. And looking at it now, you can certainly see the spa could be two or three points ahead, Ambrose. Now it's a level game, and really from the amount of position Cora have had, they're level with spa. Or oh, Cora would take this, because I mean, spa have been taking the game so far to Cora, and as you say, they've missed two or three very easy chances. You know, one would, one would hope that it wouldn't come against them at the end of the game, but I mean, you know, I, it, it is a county final at the end of the day, and if, if you're wasteful like that, you know, it, it may come against you. Kick out coming out to the centre, Cora man breaking there, Sharon's cannon slipping as they went to that one, picked up first spa again, right back in the on the fence, coming forward, trying to pick it up with their number nine, Kevin Healy. Healy giving it out here to the number five, Brian Russell. Brian Russell drives away a ball down here, and on close towards Michael Dunno, Michael Dunno coming out to Cora man holding up there Paul Hayes gives the free there going inside their number 13 the number 13 is Keen Tobin former Kerry Minor leaves the ball behind him Tobin goes backward gathers it now looking solos the ball trying to come give it back out to his full power that's Mike Lloyd on the better known as Dam Mike Lloyd on the moving into the centre he can kick left to right surprised he didn't have a go for there he's trying to walk the ball inside two cornermen come converging him there he gives the back out the ball back now to Kevin Healy Healy will kick this one long with a woeful kick from Kevin Healy the ball gone away well, in fact really off the shoe altogether there Ambrose yeah the one thing that, that, that worries me you know at times Spa uh, the two of them going forward you know at that time you know, they had Kevin Andrew and Brian Russell up in the half hour line in the attack that's too many men because I mean the big thing with Spa I think if they leave it open inside of that full forward line they have a better chance but when they come up like that particularly across their half hour line they're bunching too much and I mean it's easy to defend for Coral against that kind of stuff Kick out coming here again, being picked up by the number seven for Cora. The number seven, of course, is John O'Connor. John O'Connor giving it into the centre. Well blocked there, Johnny McGlynn, but he goes back to recover there from the number 10 for Spa there. The man, of course, is Connor Gleeson doing well. Cora back in the possession, down along the stand side of the field. Cora need to get into this. Daniel Shea is pushed in the back there. Referee gives no free. Ball back in Spa's possession, trying to bring it out and call. Cora there, ball broken again, a lot of spoiling in the play at the moment there, Cora not holding on to the possession, neither can Spa, over on the far side of the field, the number 12, Nilo Mahoney going down, that said it was a free to Spa, over on the far side of the field, a lot of 
uh, humdingering around there at the moment, really, over nobody getting clean position there, Ambrose. No, a lot of breaking, and, and as you said, it's becoming a little bit bunched, and, and, and that won't be conducive to, to good football, Joe. You know, both teams are, are, can be are, are bunching a little bit too much for my like at the moment. Ball coming inside to the number 15. That number 15 is Tomas Lynch. Tomas Lynch has the ball over the far side, has given it off, gives it away inside, or stamming in. Michael O'Donoghue comes out front. This is a chance, surely he'll kick it from here. Michael O'Donoghue kicks it in, kicks it high, and sends it over the bar. Actually, Ambrose, the one part of his play, he is a good kicker from distance. He has been trying to take that ball that extra yard or two in, you know, on the previous attacks. Uh, like, yeah. unless that he's carrying some kind of an injury to a leg or something. No, I don't think he is, but I'd say he's the type of player, you know, he's trying to bring everybody into the game. He feels that there's a big thing on his back today to get Spa across the line here in this intermediate. He knows he has to play well for Spa. Spa knows he has to play well, but you'll have to say at the moment, John, he's giving Seamus plenty of the time of it. Three points to two. Spa go back in front. Kick out coming right out towards the centre of the field. Ball broken down. Picked up by this barman there. Pam Murphy. Pam Murphy is fouled there. The man with the ponytail there. Uh, fouled there right in the centre. Paul Hayes says that's a free. The council rallies. Referee for this afternoon's county final. Free quickly taken. The referee doesn't allow it. He says the free will be taken from uh, Coraman giving a little, for a little bit of the centre ball moved up. Their number 12 takes it there. Nilo Mahanegan, the captain, gives it away inside towards Michael O'Donoghue. Michael O'Donoghue in the corner, trying to come out to make the angle, looking for someone to run. He comes outside it. He has a chance of kicking this one. Torrens works, gives the ball inside, loose. High ball inside. Cora defence is getting back there, a pull there inside, trying to see, and swung on there and gone in and gone over the bar, trying to see there the number coming out there. Conor Gleeson, John. Conor Gleeson is right, Ambrose, put that one over. Very, very lucky, that could have been a foot low into the back of the net, but you'll have to say at the moment, I mean, I know it is an awful thing to say early on the time, but Cora will have to look at this full back because, I mean, Seamus, and I know Seamus well, he, at the moment, Mike, Michael, I don't know who's playing ducks and drakes with him, and Dale, he'll keep doing that, you know, Jordan, he's a dangerous man to be allowed doing that on the pitch. Very dangerous indeed, no better than Mike Lloyd who runs up big tallies every time he tags out for spa, there's no doubt about it. And Rose that there's no doubt about it, this man will be calling to the Cali panel this year. I mean, if you travel to any matches, he's one player that really shows up so much. He does, I mean, he's good for eight and nine points every game with Spino. That's, that's a fantastic personal tally. And as you say, he has the ability and he's all the skill and all the attributes to make a really good contribution to Cali football as well, John. Andrew Garner giving the ball inside there to the Lynch. Still has the ball, trying to pick it up there. Good tackling back there by this ball. Or by Cora there and the free out, a free out there for hanging the ball on the ground. And Johnny McGlynn tries to get on with it quickly there. Ray coming back, another push in the back there on the number 11, the current number 11 there, that's John Daly, a push in the back, and this will be a free, a free for Cora Shamus, Scanlon takes it, Scanlon driving away down, away inside, but coming out there and gallowing his knees and doing well inside, since he's uh, uh, started a little bit rocky, but certainly he's come well into the game, Brian Gleeson. Gives it across there to the other wing back, Owen Cronin. And challenging coming there, the Coraman gets in there. There, Summers on the far side of the field, former Kelly Minor. Picked up away back in the corner there by Martin, by, by Fergus Clifford. Fergus Clifford trying to work the ball out. Coming out, pushed in the back there. The referee says play goes on indeed. The referee, harsh enough decision, I think, there. I thought the Sparman, the number four there, was fouled coming out. Yeah, you'd have, yeah, I thought Fergus was, was fouled there. You'd have to say, Joe, at the moment, uh, Spa are, are, are looking the more dangerous and more, more likely to win this match. Cora are a little bit lethargic, and you know, that there's not that little bounce that, that seems to be in Spa's foot today by Cora. And indeed, that passage of play just proved it. The two players won the ball, there was nobody in sight to show, and they just had to kick the ball aimlessly in. So, I mean, you'd have to say at the moment that Spa looked the sharper and possibly playing the better football of the two at the moment, uh, Joe. Again, played in brilliant conditions here at the Fitzgerald Stadium, sun shining, whatever wind is favouring. Uh, Cora in this first half there. Number 15 will take this free. John Buckley has scored from a 45 already. This chance for John, John Buckley to bring a point between the sides now. Four points to two. 16 and a half minutes gone here this first half as uh, John Buckley with the kick. Not a great one inside. Ball goes inside. Dropped inside a chance here. Cora trying to pull in it there. Johnny McGlynn goes inside. Referee says no problem at all. Get on with it there. He tells the Coraman. Ball back in the possession of Spa. Working it out now to Kevin Healy. Kevin Healy there, challenging there, taking the challenge, drives the ball down to Pam Murphy. Pam Murphy transferring the ball now, coming forward. Spa playing the better football in this game so far. Their number five, of course, is none other than Brian Russell. Brian Russell, former Kerry Minor, kicks the ball now, waiting on there. Being chased there, being pressurised by the Coraman Seamus Scanlon there, and a push in the back there. And Mike Lloyd on who by Seamus Flynn. This will be a free, a free for Spa. To be taken by Mike Lodon, who goes shocked with it again, gives it inside to the, his number 12. His number 12, of course, Nilo Mahani, the captain. Nilo Mahani coming inside, still has the ball. Nilo Mahani will kick this one high, long, inside, and gone over the bar. That's a very good score from Nilo Mahani. Ambrose. Very good score. You, you, you'd have to say that, Joe, that at, at this present moment, that, that Nilo Mahani and Mike Lodon are causing the core defence a lot, lot of problems. You know, but I know Nile had a few misses earlier, but I mean, Cora to win this game will have to tighten up on both these players. Otherwise, this game will slip away from them, uh, Joe. 
Five points to two here at the Fitzgerald Stadium. This Castle Island co-op marked intermediate football final. Of course, the winners go on to represent Kerry in the All-Ireland Series. So a series that has been a big success for the Kerry club so far. Indeed, uh, St. Michael's Filemore proving it that's last year when they won in Croke Park on the 14th of February and has done wonders for that club. Kick out coming out towards the stand side of the field. Up there, ice with ball broken down again. Picked up by Seamus Scanlon there. Free for Cora. Taken quickly. Gives it inside now. Coming out there full forward. The full forward is Daniel O'Shea. Has the ball approaching the 50 yard line. Solos tries to come inside there. They full back there. And that of course is Aiden Cahill. Cora have it again. Drives a hopeful ball inside but well cut off there. Inside by one corner in the number seven. He gives it out here now to Conor Gleeson. Conor Gleeson score a point already in this game. Drives the ball forward indeed. Could have ended up as a goal as Ambrose said. Cora and the ball inside by the number 13. Keen Tobin. Tobin uh, trying to do ducks and drakes there with the, with the cutter man. Martin Howe gives it back inside to Hugh O'Donoghue. Hugh O'Donoghue coming into the centre on the 50 yard line. Gives it back to Pam Murphy. Pam Murphy solo looking for the opportunity to come inside. Still Pam Murphy works the ball across. Works across to Hugh O'Donoghue again. The centre back coming forward now. Spa really challenging here. Good challenge coming in there from the cutterman. The ball going loose there. And the Spawman holding on to there. The number 10, Conor Gleeson. He releases the ball back to Kevin Healy. Kevin Healy looks for the pass over towards the stand side of the field to the number 7, Owen Cronin. Cronin giving it back again. Cronin giving it back to Nilo Mahoney. He's pulled as he went inside. Another chance here, I've no doubt. Mike Lodon will come out to the slam ball. I think so. A little bit of afters there, John, but uh, I think that no, nothing really handbag stuff. As you say, the one worrying thing for me at, at the moment, and I mean if you're, if you're in the colour camp as well, is the ease with which uh, Spa are handling defensively as well. You know, whatever colour trying at them, they seem to be dealing with it very, very easily indeed. And you'll have to say Spa are well worth their lead at the moment and playing the better football of the two sides, John. Referee there, over in the far side of the field, waiting for running repairs there, I think, to the number 12 there, uh, Nilo Mahoney, the captain of the Spa team. A big prize, of course, today at Stake Ambrose in this uh, county intermediate final. I mean, it's, it's a big thing for a, a club that may not be able to win a senior county championship to go on and represent Kerry. It's, it's a big... I mean, it has improved St. Michael's file more. They've developed into the, the county championship team this year as well. Oh, yeah. And indeed, as you said, it is a fantastic competition. And, and it was great. You see, the long ago, it was the winners of this and it was it for an intermediate championship. You could go on your own. But I mean, now, you know, it is, it is, it is taking on a far bigger programme and spectrum. We'll say when you can go to Munster and, and go to an All Ireland series you know, and playing Crop Park for All Ireland final. As you say, a big, a big thing for a club to be able to do that. Pam McCarthy there and his spa counter having a little bit of words there. And on the far side, the number five there, of course, Brian Russell, referee, very sensibly telling him to cut it out and get on with it. Ball being brought out for Curran now as we move into the last five minutes of this first half. Spa leading by five points to two, trying to walk the ball forward. Howard has it. Martin Howard gives the ball forward now. But a bad pass, really. A pass that these, the Curran man wasn't going to get it. It's a line ball there, a line ball. Bad passing of the ball for Cora, hindering him really setting up attacks, Ambrose. Yeah, and they're that little bit slow as well. You know, they're taking three or four passes. Well, Spa just take one or two passes, didn't give the ball quickly. You know, they're the better style of football. You'll have to say at the moment, Joe. You don't know. Giving it forward there to Pam Murphy. Pam Murphy right on the sideline, going past the centre back. The centre back for Cora's James Fleming. He comes inside, gives a high ball inside, walk back out, back into the possession. The Mike Lloyd on the wheel, kick this one. Will it curl off? It's curling, it's curling, it's gone in, it's gone high, and it's gone over the bar. And really, that's a super score. And really, looking at the county championship today, and we're in the county final now, looking at a lot of other club games. He's one player I've seen throughout this year, anytime I've seen either he's carry when they play the two games, or with, with Spa. He's been a fantastic kicker. I mean, there are many other players around the county with his ability to kicking. I mean, we, we saw him just first time in the All Ireland final that, that day above in, in, in Tullus when he got the two goals against Kildare. He's a fantastic kicker. I mean, to me, he has all the attributes, you know. He's a big, strong boy. He's active with both feet. And, I mean, there's a bit of gut in him as well, you know. He won't be for one thing either. People say that he's, he might be lucky, but that he's not. I mean, he's a poor hearted footballer. And as you say, I think, and he's very young. People don't realise that. I think he's young enough and he will have a big part to play for Kildare. And we hope he'll be brought into the panel, as you say, for the league. And, 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 and let's see what. Let's show the county what he can do. Hayden Cahill there coming out with the ball there. He was fouled. This would be a free to spa again. A free to spa. Six points to two spa leading in this Castle Island Co op Mark County Intermediate Football Final. To the midfielder, Andrew Garnet. Garnet has the ball, gives it back. Again, trying to work the ball forward. Better passing, better movement from Spa at the moment. Hugh O'Donoghue has it. Hugh O'Donoghue being closed down. Kicks it forward. Not a great one. In favour of the corner defender there, Martin Howell. The ball falling out of his hand there. Right on the sideline, being picked up by Brian Russell. Brian Russell has the ball. The linesman is signaling that the ball was out over the line. Didn't think it was out over the line from here, but he's closer to the action. Right down on the line here. The winter sunshine, I suppose, now shining down here at the Fitzgerald Stadium. But an excellent day for football. The flags blowing a little bit in favour of Curran this first half as they play into the dressing room interior of the Fitzgerald Stadium. 
Their number eight, Johnny McGlenn, the captain, will take this sideline ball for Cora, the referee, having awarded the issues a yellow card to number 13, Keen Tobin there, the spawman, getting a yellow card, and Johnny McGlenn will take this sideline ball. Cora not able to get anything flowing at the moment. They need to get a couple of scores before half time. Ball going inside, breaking out again, trying to come out for the Buckley there, the ball going out over the line. It'll be a line ball, a line ball for Cutter right on the 50 yard line, takes it inside. Ball fair in the back, the back coming out strong to there. Spa doing very well in defence. Aiden Cahill working the ball across there to his number four. His number four is Fergus Clifford transferring the ball away along the line, working out to stand side to Owen Cronin. Cronin turns there with Nilo Man, he has it on the 50 yard line, tries to bounce the ball. Now the ball not coming up into his hand, the ground getting that little bit wet after the weather we've had over the last week inside the Pam Murphy. Murphy releasing the ball back to the Spawman coming forward again. The Spawman giving it back to Garnet. Garnet gives it out to Nilo Mahoney. We have two and a half minutes left in this first half. The ball coming inside and walked inside for another chance of a score here. The number 13, Keen Tobin. Tobin who got a yellow card. Tobin rounding his man again. Comes back, puts it on the left. Drives it inside with the ball going away out here and going wide. Not a great uh, effort there by Keen Tobin. We're looking at it at the moment. As you said, Ambrose, if Smart to add another couple of points, they could be able to get before Cora even get going. Yeah, that's right. You know, the, the one man that, that, that's totally anonymous in, in this game for me is, is Seamus Gannon. And I think Cora to, you know, to have a chance and, and, and maybe you know, to win this thing, that's going to have to have a far, far bigger effort from, from Seamus Gannon. He needs to get on the ball more and control the game more. You'd have to say at the moment to Spa dictating in, in more series of the field and, and signs on their four points to two up. And as you say, could be a little bit further ahead, but for wasteful shooting. Shane O'Leary with the kick out for Cora coming out to Seamus Gannon, as Ambrose mentioned, they'll have to get him into the game, being picked up by their centre forward, the centre forward there, good play by John Daly, John Daly driving the ball forward, they need a score, Daniel O'Shea has it, Daniel O'Shea, man running off in there, is it the number three coming forward there, trying to see the number indeed it is Seamus Friend, the full back, coming forward, his kick is dropped again, he does well though, to retrieve it, drives it back to Daniel O'Shea, long kick coming in from Daniel O'Shea and has gone wide and really Cora needed that one to go over Ambrose. They did, they did, I, I think that they've done a little bit of rejigging Gerard, I, I think they've switched their, their James Fleming has gone in now taking up the duties of marking Michael O'Donoghue and uh, James Seamus has gone to centre half back, that may suit them because that's what's a big part of Seamus's game Gerard is bringing the ball forward from the half back line and at the moment Cora needs somebody to get on the ball and take the ball forward you know with a view to getting that, that for a foul into the game and, and as you said that might be a good move but the only worry about that is James I thought was to me lucky a yard or two in pace and if he, if he is Michael Gordon who will exploit that to the full Exactly, they're not winning the possession around the middle of the field, uh, Cora. What you'd expect them to do? No, as you say, Spa adopting this policy of breaking the ball and they've, they've pulled uh, Pam Murphy back. The other man, the unsung hero as well for Spa at the moment, is their fullback, Aidan Cahill. He's played lovely football. I mean, we haven't done Dan Lush yet, but for that wide, hasn't been in the game either. And that's a testament to how well Willie Cahill is playing as well. And indeed, the Spa defence as a whole, they seem to be on top of their game in most positions, uh, Joe. Kick out coming from the keeper, drives it out to the centre, well taken, right in the centre by McGlynn. McGlynn giving it to Seamus Scanlon. Seamus Scanlon trying to walk the ball forward. Jack Dennehy's on it, there's a Dan O'Shea. It's Jack Dennehy drives it long inside and gone wide again. Another wide coming inside Jack Dennehy's first uh, aim at uh, the post this afternoon. Just going wide there, Jack Dennehy with a chance and they need one or two of those to go over. Do the, yeah, that's the thing about Connor, like they're four points behind there. At this stage, they'll have to be taking every chance they get. And as you said, the, the breeze is favouring them. And I always felt my own time, that's the scoring goal here in Killarney and it's the easiest goal to play into. And if I was down four points at that time, I would be certainly worrying if I was in the, in the Connor camp at the moment, I'd be worried for the second half, Joe. Kick out, welcome from... The spa keeper, that's none other than James Devan. James Devan with the kick out. Good kick from James Devan. The ball holding up that little bit in the breeze. How towards all well caught by Seamus Cannon. First bit of clean feeling we've had in the game so far. They need to get this man going. There's no doubt in this man's ability. Changes the ball across. Good ball inside though. Jack Tenney has it now. A great man to come up with a goal at a point. Indeed, he has a sent it high and sent it over the bar. And really, that's what it comes from. And Rose, if they're able to win the clean possession, there's no doubt about it. As we pointed out before the start of the game, a full foul line of Jack Tenney, Daniel O'Shea and Johnny Buckley will be able to take their scores. They will, yeah, but I mean, that's what Cora need at the moment. That was a fine feeling by, by Seamus Cannon. He needs to drive this team forward now. They're in three, but they'll be happy enough going half time down three points, you know, because they, 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 as you said, they could be down five or six points. You know, Spa haven't put them away, but you'd have to say I'd worry for Cora. It's only the last couple of minutes they've come into the game in the middle of the field, both Johnny McGinn and Seamus Cannon. They'll have to have a whole half hour of that in the second half if they're to do any good, uh, Joe. James Devan with the kick out, carry out towards the centre. Scanlon's out there again, Garnet, ball going behind him, well picked up by Conor Deason. 
Gleason Ball has gone onto the ground again and a free a free for spot air. A lot of players slipping a bit. First pitch a little bit wet. We've had a lot of rain over the last number of days in the Killarney area here as the free taken by Gann. Gann giving it out now to Brian Russell. Brian Russell coming forward with the ball. He's going heading towards the 50 yard line. That's the, the corner 50 yard line. Ball going inside. Gann going forward again. Gann falling over the challenge there. Gives it back inside to Mike Lodono. Lodono moving in towards the centre. Being followed there by the centre back there is James Fleming. Gives it back to Niall O'Mahony, Niall O'Mahony going inside we'll have a chance to kick it here Cora Atley making him to kick it ball coming off the upright and going wide there going wide but Spa seem to have that little bit more time at ease when they take the ball forward than Cora when they're going in exactly and, and you, you, you looked at the time that affording Michael, Michael Dunho on, on the ball you know it's, it's frightening because he's getting time to run across you know kind of goes across the, 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 the full back and they're not getting close enough to him they're allowing him so long and he's turning and twisting and Nilo Mahan is invariably popping up at the end of it so I mean they'll have to tighten up in those two positions to not have a chance Cora kick out coming out to Seamus Scanlon they picked him out there right on the side and he walks it back to the number three Seamus Flynn back to Seamus Scanlon a bit more like you now from Cora coming forward Seamus Flynn driving away down inside towards Jack Dennehy Jack Dennehy very tenacious footballers Jack Dennehy over there with him of course is Fergus, uh, is Fergus Clifford Jack Dennehy trying to come inside walks the ball away inside in towards Johnny Buckley Johnny Buckley there the referee getting in the tackle there I think Daniel O'Shea giving it back to Buckley again Buckley puts it on the left is it going high it's gone in and gone over the bar a good score there from Cora a well worked score there Ambrose Anderman. you'd have to say that and the one thing that's noticeable is Johnny Buckley and Jack Dennehy you know, I know Brian Gleeson has to come into terms with, 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 with John Buckley but Dennehy seems to have the legs on, on Clifford and you know, that would be a worrying thing for Spa as well he's gone around them down now twice you know, at ease and, and, and very comfortable looks and he's not afraid to take him on you know, a slight little worry for Spa maybe but as you say they need to win the middle of the park and at the moment Seamus and Johnny McGlynn have finished the game very strong they're playing the last five or six minutes and it's, it's showing what Cora can do They're right on the half time whistle now as the kick out comes from the keeper, James Evan, good kick, well caught inside by Gannon, giving it forward again. Gannon giving it forward here to Keen Tobin on a yellow card. Tobin on the 50 yard line, going down along this uh, on this sideline here on the terrace side of the Fitzgerald Stadium. Jumping in there to the corner player, and the corner player doing well to keep him out there. That's number four, Howard. Howard, Martin Howard, who's trying to walk the ball inside us, Keen Tobin. Tobin giving back now, giving back to Connor Gleason. Scorer a point when he drew on the ball, it could have ended up in the net or anywhere. And the ball going inside to Mike Lodono. Mike Lodono, oh, Claire Gleason goes inside, Charles Brennan save a super save by Shane O'Leary and the corner goes there Ambrose that was a fantastic save you know and I mean it is amazing that the two goal chances are found to Conor Gleeson but I mean you know he, he done everything right he kept it low on Haddon it was a fantastic save but I mean warning for Cora again Mike Gordon who went through too easy that time John and coming forward is Paul McCarthy. McCarthy bouncing the ball if Cora were to get another point Daniel O'Shea has it walks the ball back to Seamus Scanlon Seamus Scanlon touching the ball on the ground but really Hard to blame him there because the pass was way off him. He tried to dump it there. Walk forward again. Garnet on the 50 yard line coming inside. Heading for the 40. Going inside. Walks it back inside to Tobin. Tobin kicking for the post. Ball going inside. Dangerous ball inside. A uh, square ball. The referee signaling that the player was inside the square when the ball landed in. This would probably be the last action of the first half. Six points to four. Had Spa got that goal, Ambrose, you'd find it very hard to see Cora coming back into They don't seem to be at the moment able to create those goal opportunities. No, no. Two created now in the first half, but I mean the worrying thing for Spa as well is that they didn't take anyone of the two of them. You know, it's a hundred percent miss rate, and I mean they've had a few bad wides. But you would say I think of the two teams going in, Spa would be the happier. I know Cora finished the game fairly strong in the last ten minutes, but they got in the middle of the field and they got a halt in that. The proof of the two kind of fouls can do, but uh, the, sadly to say for Cora's point of view, they weren't doing enough of it. And you'd have to say, well, they're only two points down. I think they'll be they're lucky to be two points down. I think Spa should be more ahead. So at half time here in the Fitzgerald Stadium, this county intermediate football championship final, it's Spa six points, Cora four points. Half time score, Spa in the lead by two points. Uh, Spa having a lot of the play in the first half, maybe missed a number of chances really, and uh, they'll be looking for to put those things right. But as you say, Ambrose, you said this would be the scoring goal here down the at the uh, dressing room into the ground here at the Fitzgerald Stadium. Yeah, well, in my own playing, in my own playing days, Gerald, that's the goal we, we you. You loved playing that in the second half. One felt I always found it a little bit more difficult to score on the upper goal. And it is, I suppose, each piece has their own scoring goals. And for us, I think for most of these Kelly clubs, that will be the scoring goal here in the park. The other thing you'd have to worry about from Cora's point of view, where they came into the game with the last five or six minutes of the first half, but you'd have to say Spa dominated the game right through in most sectors of the field. The only place that maybe a little bit suspect is inside, you know, at cornerback Fergus. Fergus Clifford was caught a few times. But you'd have to say, like, you know, 
in most other areas, power and control. Their half back line, Brian Russell, Hugh Jordan, Hunan Cronin were in total command. And as you said, they played Pam Murphy deep. He picked up a lot of breaks, kind of done the, the, the hard graft for, for Spa, and it is working for them. They kind of blotted out the threat of John McGlynn and Seamus Gannon down the middle of the field. But you'll have to say, Seamus Gannon, look, we know his ability. He's a fantastic midfielder and he's a very good footballer. This is a big ask of Seamus Gannon now, the second half, you know, it will be, he, Cora will need him to rise his game, you know, at least 50-60% from the first half, and indeed Johnny McGlynn, and they've got to try to prompt this, this Cora foul into action, because you'd have to say, for most of the first half, they were playing catch-up to the Spa, and but for bad finishing by Spa, Spa would be further ahead, Joe. Another interesting fact, this was this afternoon, Dan Sullivan, a man who died at the, I suppose, last days of 2008, last year, Dan Sullivan from Cora. It's a, a, a great tribute, I suppose, that Cora are in the final here today, and I suppose if they were to win it, they would be uh, showing it for uh, Dan, doing it for Dan, because Dan indeed had agreed to become the assistant trainer here to this uh, Cora team and selector for this year, so for 2009. So I suppose if Cora were to win it, uh, it would be a fitting tribute to a great GM, and indeed you knew him well yourself, Ambrose. I knew him well. He was a great friend of mine. I think Dan went to most games. You know, he was a, a national last side column because you know he was a, he was always a very intelligent man about football. He knew a lot about the game. Went to one after the games. Games you wouldn't expect Dan to be at. Dan would have been at them. You know, be it minor under 21 or senior, he seemed to be at an after the games. He had a great knowledge of the game and a great love for the game. And as you say, Dan would be a loss and a huge loss to Cora. And indeed to, to Kerry football in general. I think Dan, you know, he he he, he went as a Kerry selector for Kerry Miners, Kerry New Orleans, you know. Nothing was a problem to Dan. You know, mileage and going to cast Kerry Fellas to match it was not a problem for Dan. And as you say, a big, big loss. And, and I'm sure he's looking down to the air and, and, and trying to urge Coro on. No doubt about it. Dan Sullivan, that great Coro servant, as we're ready for, ready for Paul Hayes to throw the ball in for the start of the second half here in this county intermediate football final. Paul Hayes checking the watch, throws the ball in, and we're on the action. Ball broken down. Picked up again by Spa. Spa walking the ball out here towards the terrace side of the ground. Ian Summers coming across here. Ball being picked up by Nilo Mahani. Nilo Mahani going inside and he pulled back there by Ian Summers. Ian Summers, the former two years ago, Kerry Minor there. Um, not in the game as much, Ambrose, as you'd expect from a player of, of his ability. Yeah, you would have to say, though, on the other side of the coin is, is that Nilo Mahani is really playing a captain's role for Spa, as indeed he's done all year. And as you say, he's not afraid to run at, at, at Ian and take him on when the occasion arises. And, and as, as you say, from Coral's point of view, that's. Michael O'Donoghue with this free, long, high ball inside, curling away though, curls out and goes out to the right or the left hand side as we look out from it here in the Fitzgerald Stadium. First wide of the second half going to Michael O'Donoghue, score still remains, six points to four in Spa's favour at the start of the second half. Whatever breeze is there, it is favouring Spa in the second half and I suppose as we move into winter time, the evenings definitely with the breeze beginning to rise as more and more as you get deeper into evening time. Cora have this free, Seamus Scanlon taking over towards the stand side, Daniel O'Shea came up with his gathered there by, I think, the number 12 is the number uh, 12, Pam McCarthy, I think, there. Gathered it over on the far side. He was fouled, and this free, I think, is checked in. He has the ball, no, it's Johnny McGlynn. Gives it inside, waiting for the ball there. And one thing, I suppose, Father Kelly always said, never wait for the ball because the ball will wait for no man. And the uh, Sparman getting in there in front of him. Ball walked inside, well picked up inside. Keen Tobin lost the possession there. Going back to pick it up there is Martin Howard. Howard winning the ball, takes the free quickly. Over to the far side to Johnny McGlynn. Big second half required from McGlynn and his other midfield partner, Seamus Scanlon. McGlynn going down along the stand side. Gives it off now, trying to walk the ball away inside. Trying to pick it up there is it Jack Dennehy looking at the pose of Jack Dennehy. Hard, elusive type of player, Jack Dennehy. Gives it back, gives it back inside to Seamus Scanlon coming forward. Back again, driven inside. Not a great ball inside there, really. A poor kick there from the Coraman there, trying to see... Is it Jack Dennehy looking out on the far side, I think? Indeed it was, Joe. It is Jack Dennehy, indeed. You know the walk, the walk of Jack Dennehy driving inside there. A chance of a score there for Jack Dennehy. Yeah, you would have to say that, you know, this is a vital part of the game now for Cora. The first 10 minutes of the second half, they've got to show dominance and, and try to get back into the game and not allow Spa, you know, gain the upper hand again. But you, you would have to say, like, that Spa still look very dangerous, Joe. Even, you know, in the early stages of the second half, they're moving freely again. Cora adopted two men for foul, I know. It may or may not work for them. They've brought Daniel O'Shea way out, I suppose, in, in, in an attempt to curb Spa across the half-back line and, and, and uh, half foul line. But at the moment, you say it is in Spa's favour. Again. Tomas Lynch with the kick drives it inside. Shane O'Leary gathers the ball on his goal, advances out, turns back, gives it inside now again, trying to walk the ball out towards the stand side. Well played out there for Cora over to the far side of the field. Coming forward is Johnny McGlynn. McGlynn has the ball going down along the far side of the field, trying to look up again, looking for someone to give it to. Gives it inside to the centre there, James Fleming. James Fleming has the ball, being pressurised there in the centre, still has it, loses it again, though, being picked up there by Aidan Cahill. Aidan Cahill 
Works the ball away down inside Torski and Tobin. Tobin has it. 50 yards out from the goal on the sideline on the east hand side. Comes inside his man there. He's Martin House. Still Keane Tobin with the ball. He's pulled back and that will be a free a free in there for spot there. Michael I don't know how to get Ambrose. Yeah, but you'll have to say, like, uh, call us a team going forward. James Kimmy had a chance to kick the ball there. Instead, he opted to solo and he got caught in possession. Ball robbed. Turn over again. That's too simple in the county final for that to happen. Now, catch your ball, let it go first time. Give your forwards a chance. And I think Cora can be, you know, they're a small bit guilty of that. Of taking too much out of the ball, but Kick across the half-back in midfield, you know, they're doing too much passing. Michael Dunno with the kick in towards the post, gone in and gone out to the left-hand side and gone wide. Spas second wide of the second half. Still no extension to the score we had at half-time. Six points to four, it was at half-time. It is still the score with two and a half, three minutes gone in the second half. This county intermediate football final being played here at the Fitzgerald Stadium. Kick out coming. From their keeper, the keeper, of course, none other than Shane O'Leary. Made a great save of the first half. Gathered by Ian Summers now. Summers has the ball, trying to drive Cora forward. Summers shouldering after Mandela, tries to give it back. Gives it back now, and Cora trying to work it forward. Dan Lushay, the 14, a way out. Coraman injured there, I think, at the moment. But it's still the play by Seamus Scanlon. Scanlon has it. Leaves the ball in inside long. Long ball inside. Out they come for the ball going loose there. Coraman trying to pick it up there. And it's Sparman fouling the ball on the ground. This will be a free in for Cora. And they will need to put a score on the board here, Ambrose. You, yeah, they certainly will. You, you, we were wondering why Stan was going short in the first half with the freeze. I think we're absolutely right there with two freeze. Left and right side, he's put both of them wide. You know, on another day, you'd expect him to, to put them over. But, um, you know, I mean, it is a more positive start from, from, from both teams. They're, they're going at the thing in the right frame of mind. They're trying to play football. It's amazing the tactics that, that each side are, are, are playing in, in, in the second half. As we said, in the first half, Spa puts, put Pam Murphy playing deep. And the second half, Cora actually putting Daniel, Daniel uh, O'Shea out and, and, and trying to, to bunch around the middle of the field. And you'd have to say as well, though, that... that uh, but for bad shooting, Spa would be further ahead. But this is giving Cora a chance to put one point in, in, in the game. You know, and I mean, these little things, they'll have to get these. This is bread and butter stuff for Cora. And to have any chance of winning this, they'll have to be converting these frees, uh, Joe. Johnny Buckley there will take this free. John Buckley will take the free here for Cora. For a chance here, about 40 yards out from the goal, slightly off centre, over towards the stand side of the field. He will nan the gap back to one point as the Ian Summers is OK again. Here resumes as John Buckley places the ball on the ground, kicking it off the ground into the, I suppose, dwindling sunlight here at the Fitzgerald Stadium at the moment as we see this uh, chance here for Cora. Johnny Buckley with a chance to kick it now to bring it back to a one-point game. Cora will be quite happy if they can nam it back. John Buckley successful with a long-range kick in the first half, kicking into whatever breeze that's against them on this second half. Good kick inside, but it curls in, comes off the post inside and gathered there inside by Brian Gleeson. Gleeson works the ball back out towards Fergus Clifford. Fergus Clifford. Good challenge on him there. He retains possession there. And Gleeson's foul coming out with the ball there. That's a free out. A free out. And Jack Dinney over there on the far side shakes his hand and tells him no, no malice intended there as he came over with the ball. A free quickly taken. Back to their keeper. Back now to James Devan. Devan solos the ball. Coming out towards his terrace side of the ground here. Looking for someone. Going loose there and picking it up there is Hugh Dunahoo. Hugh Dunahoo coming forward with the ball. He has it. Walks inside to the centre. Finding space really. And players running after him there. And coming forward, he's there full back in. Cal giving it back to Nilo Mahani. Nilo Mahani sends it in, and that really Ambrose and that is the score of the game. Yeah, it's a difference between both sides, Joe. I think Spa finding it fairly easy to open the corner defence, and when the scoring opportunity rises, they can pop the ball over the bar. I mean, that's Nile's second point of the game, and that's a very good score. And as you say, it just epitomises what's good about Spa's play. You know, it's a three man move. 1-1, one, one, go from the goalkeeper right up, they cut the ball, they're full into the field in four phases and they put the ball over the bar, a great score. Seven points to four and we have six minutes played of the second half here at the Fitzgerald Stadium. As I said, whatever breeze is blowing will be favouring Spa in the second half. One of the best scores of the game, that one there, coming from Nilo Mahoney, the captain, two points in the game so far. A line ball to be taken for Cor over on the far side of the field to take it there. Over in the far side, I think it's Seamus Scanlon that's taking it over on the just under the stand takes it out to the centre there the linesman holding his flag up there uh, waiting attention being drawn for a spa player who's down injured right out here in the centre of the field nearly seven minutes played spa leading by seven points to four spa looking far more 
more clinical when they come forward. There, there seem to be there are players when they're running, they're running off their man and giving the opportunity for the man carrying the ball to find another player in a better advantage than himself. Exactly, yeah. Tactically, they get it very right, you know, and they know what everybody else is doing. Well, Corners seems to be a little bit more disjointed when they're attacking, you know, just kind of more individual. Her spot is a, a total team effort, you know. One fellow runs for the next fellow, the next fellow runs, you know, and that's the way it goes right through the pitch. And, and at the moment, as you say, Spar finding it much easier to get the scores. Corners struggling to score at the moment. The linesman still holding his flag, having going to have a word with the referee, Paul Hayes there, as Paul Hayes goes across to the linesman, just checking on something there, just to see any action being taken either against the player or something he wants to tell him. He's saying something there to Paul Hayes, the referee, saying something there, the linesman is going over, in fact the referee going down to have a word, trying to see who is going to have I a word. I think it was, it was, it was, it, it was, I, I think, uh, Paddy Collins and, and, and Brian Russell were having a, a kind of get to know you, <laughs> get to know you, uh, uh, time in the middle of the field there for a while, John. Seamus Cannon takes the sideline ball, takes it forward, and not a great one really because Spar will able to gather this one up. Gives it back inside now to Kevin Healy. Healy's played very well throughout this game for Spa. Ball gone out over the line again. That'll be a line ball for Cora at the moment. The game uh, not as uh, not as entertaining as you would expect from an intermediate final at the moment. A lot of breaks in play here. Ball worked inside for Seamus Cannon. Seamus Cannon on the 60-yard line. Tells it across here to Ian Summers. Summers coming forward, trying to go past his man. He's on the 50-yard line, trying to bounce the ball. Still Ian Summers. Man gone loose him there, Jan Summers the ground opening up in front of him there, he was fouled going in there and that will be a free in, that will be a free in, no doubt about it, the ground opened up there for Summers, it did too easy didn't it John, I thought Summers, you know, the spa defence there, one should have taken him, you know, he, he carried the ball 50 yards, Nile, Nile O'Mahony when he's very good going forward, defensively he wouldn't be one of his strongest prowesses and I mean you know, somebody should have taken him, he nearly walked the ball into the net, John Chance there for Coronel from John Buckley to narrow the game back to a two point game. Three points between the sides as we have eight and a half minutes played in the second half. This free just right in front of the goal. John Buckley comes in, sends it high and sends it over the bar. And now it's back to a two point game. Seven points to five here in this county intermediate football final being played at the Fitzgerald Stadium, the Castle Island sponsored county football final. As we said, of course, the winners of today's game go on to, to play, uh, represent Kerry in the final. I think Spa have made a substitution at the moment, just looking down. No, no substitution, just a switch there. A switch there on the Spa team switching position. And Spa picking up their kick out very easy. Hugh, Hugh Dunn, who's working great on with, with, with his keeper, uh, James Devan, he's coming loose and Curran not picking them up. And as a result, Hugh's going to take the ball forward again for Spa and carry it right into the heart of the, of the, the Curran defence. Gives it inside to Michael Dunno. Michael Dunno has to far back to Hugh Dunno. He transfers the ball forward again. Andrew Garnett, while coming off the Swan in there, the referee has signaled that the linesman has signaled it's a line ball. A line ball for Cora. Back to Seamus Scanlon. Seamus Scanlon going away from the corner forward there. Of course, it was Tomas Lynch trying to put pressure on him there. Walking it out onto the far side. Cora need to get a score now. Seamus Flynn has it coming forward. Seamus Flynn looking for someone running loose. Loses the ball. Goes back together right in his own 50 yard line. Bounces the ball. Going really nowhere at the moment. And McGlynn has it. McGlynn coming forward. The captain for Cora. What a great footballer Johnny McGlynn has been. As we said, probably career didn't get the, the full goal because of an injury he suffered a year back, a number of years back. Buckley has the ball now. Buckley has it inside. Trying to come inside Leeson. Still Buckley comes inside again. Three Spawn with him there. He dived there, I think, and no doubt about it, the referee is quite correct. Ball coming back to Dan O'Shea. Drives it inside. Driven inside by Pam McCarthy. Sorry, Pam McCarthy's put it in. And the ball has gone wide. The ball going wide there. Uh, has it gone wide? Has it gone out for a 45? Trying to say, in fact, the ball has gone wide there, Ambrose. Gone wide, yeah. Bad miss from Corran, as we said earlier. Corran need to be taking all these to have a chance you know, of, of, of getting back. They still need two points in it. You'd have to say Spa still look more comfortable than Corran, but it's only a two-point game. You know, Spa haven't put their, their, their dominance really on the scoreboard at all, and Corran are staying in there. But as we said earlier, they'll have to take every chance that, 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 that comes to them, and, and at the moment you, you said that they're not doing that. 11, uh, 7 points to 5, 11 and a half minutes gone, kick out coming, broken out over on the stand side of the field, a line ball, first ball, Pam Murphy going across there to gather the ball, Pam Murphy going across, in fact the linesman has signaled that it's a line ball, back further there, so he's making the spawn and go back, takes it quickly inside to Aidan Cahill, has been very good throughout this game, walks it across now to Garnet, Garnet has plenty of time to gather it up when he fumbled it. Walking it forward, Spar coming forward. Hugh Donahue has had a great game so far. Drops the ball inside. Coming out there, Mike Lloyd Donahue. Two cornermen went for it there. The ball broken back. Gives it back inside. Good tackle going in there. That's a very good tackle there by Seamus Flynn there. Seamus Flynn going in. A push in the back there by Pam Murphy. That will be a free out. A free out for Cora. Two points between the sides. Seven points to five. Game now coming to life. As the ball has been brought forward again. Bad pass inside there. 
bad pass there. Uh, sub on the Cora team, the number 19 coming in there for Cora is Kevin Daly has come into the Cora team. Haven't seen who's gone off. Kevin Daly coming into the Cora team as Paul walking across to the far side of the field to Conor Gleeson. Conor Gleeson on the stand side. Inside, Mike Lloyd, don't know who has it. Bouncing the ball, coming outside. Kick off the left foot, going inside and going out. Away wide here. And really, I suppose he had a number of scores in the first half. But hasn't been as successful with his kicking this afternoon as you normally see from Michael. No, Michael's. but as well as that, Curl have adopted, the, they're, they're actually double tagging him at the moment, John. And that's as a result, is, is freeing up Hugh Ordon Hutch in that back. And Hugh is playing the free man. He's playing it very well at the moment. You see, he's, and Curl, I suppose, they're double tagging. They had to do it. I, they felt that they hadn't one player good enough on the day to hold Michael. I don't know. Now it's, they're, they're taking two in. But when you do that, you leave yourself wide open, particularly to, to, to allow Hugh Ordon Hutch get on the ball, get off and kick out in particular, and, and take the game to you. Number 21 coming on the Cora team there. Pam McCarthy has gone off and number 21 coming on. The number 21 is indeed Michael McCarthy coming on the Cora team there. Pam McCarthy gone off. The number 12 had the last wide out. So Scannon jumps, scatters the ball. And really when the ball is flighted perfectly for him, he's able to jump into the ball. Some of the balls that in the first half weren't uh, really conducive to heat getting to him. Ball towards Jack Tenney. Jack Tenney, can he make Cora spark? Gives it inside to his full forward. His full forward there is Dan O'Shea. Dan O'Shea up along the side and looking for someone to go for him. John Buckley coming out. Elusive kind of a corner forward. John Buckley. And the ball bouncing off the foot there. And going out and going, has it gone wide? It hasn't gone wide, but it's kept in play by Spa. Marked it across here now to Fergus Clifford. Fergus Clifford bouncing the ball, being put under pressure there by Michael McCarthy. The sub that came in, he's trying to give the rid of it, gets it over towards the stand side of the field. Out towards Kevin Healy. Kevin Healy moves it on further down along the line by to Brian Gleason. Over towards Connor Gleason. Connor Gleason going forward. Gleason has it. it. Was Brian Russell that gave him the pass? Well done by the corner man there. Walks inside towards the centre to Summers. Summers has it. He of course made the good run. He's looking for another one of those runs. And the Sparman pulling him back there. Pulling him back because he knew what he had done the last time. This is a chance now. Seamus Scanlon takes it quickly. Takes it across. Cora need a score now to get back to a one point game that will make a brilliant finish really. We have played in this second half. We played something in the region. Uh, around 13, 14 minutes played in the second half there. And the free to for Cora in Summers. In Summers coming out to gather the ball. We'll take this one for Cora in Summers. We'll take this one. He stands there just on the 50 yard line, takes it short inside. Not a great ball, really. A lot of work for the for the smart corner man, his man to get the ball there, and the ball has gone out over the line. The linesman is signaling that it's a line ball, a line ball for Cora. Johnny McGlenn will take this one. The captain for Cora this afternoon, Johnny McGlenn. Johnny McGlenn, Seamus Flynn up in the attack as well, gives it back. Gives it back now to the number seven. The number seven, of course, is John O'Connor. John O'Connor coming forward. Walks the ball inside. Bad pass from him. And Spa pick up the possession again. Going back there to Owen Cronin. Owen Cronin has it. Walking it away out along the centre now. Good ball towards Keane Tobin. Tobin along the ball. Go behind him there. And Spa on the attack there. Brian Russell chipping it up there. Still Brian Russell approaching the corner 50 yard line. About five yards into the side and on the stand side of the field. Still Brian Russell will he have a kick at the post. Brian Russell kicks it across. That's a good, good kick. That's a super score from Brian Russell. The wing back coming forward there. And really that all led from a bad pass down here on the terrace side of the ground here, Ambrose. Yeah, you, you, you'd have to say that, that the, the Spa half-back line are starting to dominate, really starting to dominate down. Brian Russell, to me, that was the score of the game, you know. Great run forward. But you'd have to say they've double tight Stam and they've left you don't know who in the half-back line. That's a dangerous play to, to, to adopt in this game, you know, because I think that they're allowing Spa come onto them. And, and as you say, three points of Spa got another point. You say it would be a long, long way back for Colour. Eight points to five in favour of Spa. They have scored two points in the start of this second half. Six to four, it was at half time. Cora have the ball on the stand side of the field. Cora need to get a number of scores now. They need a goal really to give this game the injection it really needs. Back seem to be on top inside, and that's well done inside. But lost the ball inside. He had the ball in his possession. Buckley is foul, is it, Jambo? He looks very lively at the Cora full forward line, to be honest, Ambrose. He does, he does. And, and himself and, and, and Brian Gleason are having a battle royale, as, as you say. And in fairness, you'd have to say Brian Gleason after a shaky start, like they're, they're having a real tussle. And Brian is doing very, very well inside, as indeed is Aidan Cahill and indeed Fergus Clifford. You know, you, you can see that Spa defence have played very well as a unit and they've given very little to Cora. But you'd have to say against that that Cora's play coming into them was in nowhere that at any stage looked like cutting them open, bad the run by Ian Summers was the only time you could say that the Spa defence really looked threatened or, or opened up today. That's free coming in from John Buckley on the far side, out towards the stand side. Buckley driving it in towards the post. High, gone in and gone over the bar. That's a good score from the number 15. John Buckley has put it in and put it over the bar. The number 15. 
A good free taker on Rosen. Uh, he's a very good free taker, and he'll have to do that. I mean, in fairness today, he's been colours. He's been their only player, if you like, with the exception of Jack. Then he's only uh, chipped in with a point. He's their scorer in chief. But in fairness, we'll have to say, very good from, from a dead ball. And again, Jar, for again, we'll keep saying this for all Spa's dominance. There's still only a two point game, eight points to six. Cormac Cronin coming into the Spa team there, substitution first part. Cormac Cronin coming in. Just trying to see who's gone off. This game will resume with a kick out from James Devan. Drives it over towards the stand side of the field. Up there, Riceford. Possession vital now. Chairman Scanlon needs to have a big last 10 15 minutes of Curra after win this county intermediate championship going forward. Oh, Johnny McGlynn. McGlynn has it. Pulled there. Looking for the kick at the post. McGlynn. Long. High ball inside. Dangerous ball. Looking for the breaks off this one. Ball broken down. Ball fell inside. Chance here picked up and well won inside by Spa there. Curran not able to get in, that not able to get possession inside there in the goal mode. It was dangerous. Nilo Manny, the captain, has it, gives it forward. Good play from Nilo Manny. Sensible play now. And coming forward with the ball to number seven, Owen Cronin. Has it challenged away down this field. Moves inside towards the centre, looking for to give the pass off. Gives it off inside. And Spa still have it, walking into hard inside. There's Tomas Lynch. Tomas Lynch has it. Coming in, making the chance to kick it. Kicks hard, long, high. That's a very good score. Come to Marstens, the number 15 has sent it over the bar and now it's nine points to six Ambrose. Yeah, it was a very good score by Tomas Lynch. You know, we, we, we noticed at the start after the game, Tomas had been very good here for Spa, proven there himself, you know, won his bar, looked at the post and had a cut off it. You would have to say, like, in those scenarios, Spa find it much easier to hit the target rather than Cora. Cora seems only way seems to be is two free kicks. Kick out coming from Shane O'Leary. Shane O'Leary with the kick out, out towards the stand side of the field, up there, Rice with Garnet punching it away there from Seamus Scanlon. Picked up again for Spa coming forward there. The number 13, Keen Torban, pulled back. This will be a free, and Michael Dunhu coming out to take it. Michael Dunhu coming out to take it. There's three points between the side, nine points to six. No goal in this match so far. We have played in this game here, 17 and a half minutes played here at the Fitzgerald Stadium. This Castle Island Co op intermediate football final. Played in good sunshine here at the Fitzgerald Stadium. Very little breeze, whatever breeze is favouring the sparman. He has it at his back as he kicks this one into the dressing room interior of the Fitzgerald Stadium. Moving up by the time he kicks it, he'll be right on the 50-yard line. Long, high inside, and the keeper looks up at it. And it's gone high and gone over the bar. A point coming in from Michael O'Donnell, who has sent it over. 10 points to 6, Ambrose. Yeah, I, I think now I'd fear for Cora. That was the, you know... A two-point game you can win, a four-point game you can see, I could see Spa kicking on now. You'd have to say, and indeed you could say from the early stage, that Conor would have needed a goal or two to win this game. You'd have to say Spa will work their four-point lead, but uh, you know, as they weren't putting Conor away, but they seem to be getting on top of them now. Kick out coming, picked up by Seamus Scanlon. Seamus Scanlon, ball going behind. Martin Holt has it for Curra coming forward. They'll need a score now. Good tackling there by the Spa in there, putting pressure on the Curra man that's carrying the ball there. And the Spa man has it, trying it inside. The referee is calling for the ball. He's going to throw this ball up. The sparman held down there inside with the ball as he was trying to go forward with it there. Pam Murphy. Pam Murphy, as I said, former Glenbeglin Car, former Kerry Minor, played in All Ireland Minor final lead. They were beaten, I think, by Leash on the day. At uh, that time, indeed, I often wonder why Pam Murphy wasn't moved back into the corner on the same day, really. Uh, very good footballers, no doubt. And Pam Murphy, indeed, has been is coming off at the moment. Pam Murphy. They're giving another run to a number of their panel at the moment and he gets a clap in the back for a job well done by the spa management team. There are Sean Minan and Willie Cahill over there. Michael McAuliffe, of course, a great Michael McAuliffe and John Kelly as well. Won the turn, jump ball, won there by Seamus Cannon. Gives it back to McGlynn. Cora will need a goal, I think, if they have to win this one. Very good defending though from Spa. Owen Cronin there putting the pressure on. Seamus Cannon has it, bounces, drives it out towards the stand side of the field. And a spa man there, they're getting to every ball first. Garnet has it. Garnet driving away over towards the stand side. Or to Michael Dunham, he comes out. Pams the ball forward, really. Gal goes back to Gal. Avoids the challenge coming in there. Still, Michael Dunham has the ball right in the stand side. Going up along the line. A challenge coming in. He avoids that challenge. This is good football from Michael Dunham. High challenge going in there. And the small man. And really... Be very lucky here, uh, John. That's a dangerous tackle by, by Seamus Flynn and, and Michael Dunham. But, I mean, you know, that's a testament to Cass. You know, you... You, you can't bite in the shop, it's, you either have it or you haven't it. And I mean, my Claudine who showed there what, what for real cast is, you know, he went to buy two core players very, very easily. And it, it was a bad tackle to, not to, 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 to stop him up. But you'd have to say, you know, that Spa seem to have that bit more quality, you know, in, in, in their attack. And there's more, there's more fluency in their football and there's a better quality football than Coral playing, as we say. I, I'd be a little bit disappointed with Coral. I think that they're better than this and they know themselves they're better than this. They haven't really, you know, they never kicked into real top gear at all today, Joe. Referee giving a yellow card there. Sensible enough refereeing. It really was a 
a challenge, I suppose, a high enough challenge, but the referee, sensible enough, gave it in. His kick going inside, going high and going in and coming off the upright there, just going wide. A good kick coming in there. I think this is the number seven, trying to see the number on his back there, the spa man. And really looking out of spa. They have been the team, they've been able to create plenty of opportunities, plenty of chances, and they're, they have worked their kick out well. I mean, Colors kick out, uh, they ball over by James Devan there, James Devan. Kick out going astray again from the corner kick out there. And this will be a free in for Spa again. Now, no doubt the same man holds the ball over his head. He's showing the ball in like rugby style that he's going to kick this one long in towards the post. A chance again to add to their lead. They lead already by four points, ten points to six. Our Spa are going to win the county intermediate football final here. There's no doubt about there will be plenty celebrating in the Spa area of Killarney tonight if they are to win this county intermediate title. Kick coming on its way. Driven in long, high in towards the post, but just curling inside and gone wide, gone out to the right as we look out here from the right, Cormac Cormac I think. Cormac Cormac. But for injury, John, he would have been on the spot. He's a very, very good footballer and is normally very, very accurate. But it's nice to see Cormac get, you know, getting, his, getting his 20 minutes in this because, as I say, nobody wants to miss the final. And indeed, I think he was heartbroken, but you're not know, able to see him getting his 20 minutes in this match. Coran not able to pick up the position. They have it now, though. Seamus Scanlon has it going over towards the far side of the field. Seamus Scanlon. We have 22 minutes gone, nearly 23. Dan Loche nipping in there. Cora need a goal. Can they get a goal? There's no doubt when you have the talent of Jack Dinehy and those on the inside. There will be chances. McGlynn is on the run. He'll have to go inside. There's a man loose inside. That was Jack Dinehy calling for the ball. The chance may be gone astray now. Chance inside. Ball broken inside. And the Sparman jumping there. One Sparman is down injured. But Spa doing well in defence. Coming forward the ball now. Spa coming out of their own defence. Calvin Farber's huge on who. Is it you, Jones? Not his head and Nilo Mahoney. Nilo Mahoney, the number 12 and the captain for Spa. Going inside, turning inside Ian Summers. Heading for the 50 yard line. Has a man on the off his shoulder. He t- gives it inside and being pulled back there. The number 15, I think, is being pulled back there. That's another free, another free for Spa. And this will be a chance. Uh, Michael O'Donnell will come out there. The number 16, in fact, for Spa there. That was fouled there as he went inside. Damon O'Sullivan there was fouled as he went inside. And really, Spa seemed to have all the answers at the moment, Ambrose. They do, yeah. You'd have to say that well worth their, their, their four point lead. Um, even that last passage of play just showed us you know, how poor an attack Cutter have been today. You know. They brought the ball from the 21 yard line. And when they came there, they were really lacking ideas. And there was a hope and hit ball across the square. Kenny O'Ball, you didn't want it. That time, Cody needs to keep it tight and attack from that corner rather than trying to play this wide ball across. And Spa, you'd have to say, dealt with it rather easily in defence. And as they have all day, you'd have to say, Cody's only threat today would have been from dead ball scenario. I think from play, they didn't, they lacked ideas and they weren't really, as we say, as good as Spa were in front of goal. Michael O'Donnell with this kick to about 40, 44, 45 yards out, drives it high, it's gone in, but it's gone wide again. Not the greatest kicking there from uh, no, Michael O'Donnell this afternoon. Misses. No, he's had three bad misses there. You know, I know they've been 40, 50 yards out, but you know, you would expect a player of his quality to put those bars over the bar. Kick out will come from their keeper, Shane O'Leary. Brilliant save in the first half for Shane O'Leary. Shane Scanlon up there, right? The ball broken now, my God. Picked up by Summers, the wing back there. Summers trying to come forward there. Often wonder maybe would they have been better after moving into the middle of the field. He seems to be all alive. Scanlon driving the ball forward. And the Sparman is out there to bat the ball out here. Coming out towards the terrace side of the ground here. Pulled on the ball there. Pulled across the Coraman there. This is a free for Cora there. The number 19 fall there. That number 19 is none other than Kevin Daly. Kevin Daly, of course, coming in. Came into the game free for Cora to be taken by their full forward, Dan O'Shea. He swings the ball away inside in towards Johnny Buckley. Ball going behind Johnny Buckley. Picked up here by Aidan Cahill. Has had a brilliant game this afternoon. Giving it out to Keen Tobin. Tobin on the 50-yard line. Ball broken down. Cora need a goal. If they're to win this game, there's no doubt about it. Points. They're not able to get the points. Buckley walks the ball inside towards the centre. Any man running for Cora now. Inside, Seamus Flynn trying to carry the ball forward. Flynn has it fouled inside. This will be a free in. A free in there. A free in for Curra, and this will bring it back to a three point game. And there's no doubt about it, a goal can come from any place. But looking at the game this afternoon, we have played here at this very moment now. We are looking at 26 minutes, I think nearly 26 minutes gone, around that gone in this second half at the moment. And this free will be taken by John Buckley. A chance for Buckley again, as Ambrose pointed out. All scores really except one from Jack Dinney have come through the boot of John Buckley this afternoon. John Buckley drives it in and sends it over the bar. Another point for John Buckley. Six point of the game has gone over. Now it's back to a goal, Ambrose. Yeah, back to a goal. But you, you, you'd have to say, you know, you'd wonder where it's going to come from, really. You know, I'd expect Spot to, to, to kick on from here. As I say, it, it is very lethargic by Curra going forward. You know, they're kind of depending on, on something to happen waiting for somebody else to do something you know they're really with the exception of John Buckley and maybe Jack Jack Dinny here that threat up front really has been nil today you have to say the four other fouls have been they were poor enough 
James Devan with his kick out first paw works his shot they worked the shot kick out very well this afternoon avoiding the centre of Johnny McLean and Seamus Scanlon here's the ball across here now to Damien O'Sullivan Damien O'Sullivan has the ball coming forward Spa trying to walk it down here right in front of us at the moment a bit of a high kick inside they're looking inside the corner man coming out to gather the ball there he gathers and works it out there that's the number six but he lost possession as he came out ball going inside now Keen Tobin the ball bounces inside Shane O'Leary the keeper has it works it out now Curran need to get this ball forward Seamus Cannon has it on the 21 yard line further out towards Daniel O'Shea out towards the stand side of the field giving it forward again being picked up there trying to see who has it I think it's Seamus Flynn is at the number three walks the ball across here Curran need a goal there's no doubt about it Summers with a ball going in straight away and Mike Lodon who nipping in there to get the ball their passing hasn't been as crisp as you'd expect Ball released right inside to Nilo Mahoney. Nilo Mahoney kicking the ball in towards the post. Good pressure being putting him there as he went to kick it inside. And the ball has gone out and gone wide. The referee, Paul Hayes, has said no push or anything in there. That's Trusted just... Trusted but enough, wasn't it? <laughs> but, I mean, you'll have to say that Paul Hayes has been the game pretty well today. You know, I know Spa does a couple of things Spa might be... But, I mean, to be fair, I think he's done a reasonably good job on it. Did a very good job indeed, Paul Hayes from the Council of Club. Ball back in with Nilo Mahoney the man who had that wide he'll get his chance to redeem himself very good footballer walks the ball away over towards the far side towards Keane Tobin Tobin punches the ball inside here chance here for Spa chance of a goal to wrap it up inside goal that's it there's no doubt about it the number 15 Thomas Lynch has finished the ball to the net some good work there inside by Damon O'Sullivan worked the ball back to Thomas Lynch and really that's it really Ambrose Gentlemen. and no more than Spa is up Johnny you'll have to stay on the run play you know it, it was coming but you'll have to say Colm McCronin is a young boy he showed great years of experience there he held up the ball laid the ball after Tomás Lynch guaranteed a score very well very well worked goal and you'd have to say Spa well worked the lead there Joe did my apologies there that was indeed Cormac Cronin's right and held the ball up gave it inside to Tomás Lynch and indeed rifled the ball back into the, the coronet so really that looks like curtains here for Curran this county intermediate final score stands now one goal and ten points for Spa seven points for Curran as a foul on the a foul there on the Coraman uh, coming out this will be a free for Cora quickly taken they need to get on with this game quickly coming forward Dan O'Shea Dan O'Shea chipping it forward there towards Johnny McGlynn McGlynn leaving the ball behind him there and the Sparman going down together there is, is their number 9 he's done very well Kevin Healy gives it back to Owen Cronin Owen Cronin driving the ball forward again into space and really they have been able to find this space and Kane Tobin with a chance Kane Tobin with a kick and Kane Tobin has put it over the bar to make it 1 goal and 11 points for Spa to seven points and really Ambrose it has to be said Spa deserving of their lead here and deserving of their victory which I know presume they will go on to do oh yeah I mean you, you look at their forward line you know five of their six forwards have scored you know, in the game how you could say Cora have only two forwards John Buckley and Jack Kinney and I mean that's that's more now to the scoreboard 111 to seven points you'd have to say Spa are well worth this you know it was only a matter of time before this happened you know ones were hoping that Cora could stay with them within two points or three points but I think you know once the goal came I think it was, it was um, and it could have come earlier you know Cora were lucky it didn't come earlier Kick out coming out towards the centre. Ball broken away from Seamus Scanlon. Being picked up by the centre forward there, John Daly. John Daly has it down along the stand side of the field. Walking inside, Jack Denny coming out. Good work there though. All on the far side by Brian Gleeson. Has done very well. Indeed had probably the shaky start inside the first minute. But after that, Ambrose, he's really stuck to his task. He has indeed himself and, 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 and Aidan, Aidan O'Cahill and Fergus indeed have mastered that full-back line well. You'd have to say Brian Russell or Dunne Hoon Cronin or a North Georgian any bother either. And you'd have to... You know, Kevin Healy, this man has given years of, of, of time to Spa and he's played very, very well today. In fairness to him, he's in real old stages for them and he's done everything, done it the hard way. And it's nice to see you know, Kevin pick up an intermediate medal here today. A sideline ball, first ball over on the far side of the field. We're right on the time now of this. Uh, Michael Donoghue has it. Michael Donoghue pulled there as he tried to go forward with the ball and really Cora have been lacking. Really, I think lacking a bit of mobility around the field, Ambrose. They don't seem to have the legs. Spa seems to be a lot faster to run onto the ball. And are better sharper, sharper, yeah. sharper you, yeah. you're dead right. You know, the, 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 from the word go, Spa looks sharp. You know, every one of their players looks to be bouncy tops of the ground. There was a, a pep in the step. Whereas, you know, Barnley, except a few players with colour, a lot of them seem to be heavy legged today. You know, Spa were getting to the balls first, they were getting to the breaks first. And, and you'd have to say, great credit to, to, to Sean, to Sean Mine and his this team in real good fettle. That, that physically, they're, they're, I think they they can be no fitter. Michael O'Donnell with the kick right into injury time. Long, high ball going inside and gone in and gone over the bar. That's a good kick. From Michael O'Donnell who has put it in and has put it over the bar. Score one goal and 12 points. First ball, seven points. For Curra, there is no doubt about it. The victors in this Castle Island Co-op Intermediate Football Final here at the Fitzgerald Stadium. A victory it will turn out for Spa. They walk the ball out shot to Seamus Flynn. Curra trying to work it forward. They'll need plenty of goals, but there isn't time as done as the referee Paul Hayes has blown up 
and mine in there, the manager there, the management, Sean Mine and Willie Cahill and Michael McAuliffe and John Kelly, delighted over there as Spa take the spoils in this county football intermediate final. One goal and 12 points for Spa, seven points for Cora and really Ambrose. Uh, uh, Spa deserving of their victory, there's no doubt about that. Oh, yeah, and I mean, you know, but for a, a few bad misses, they would have been further ahead. You know, I, I think they, they deserve fully the, their victory, and I think the scoring justifies about Spa's dominance. I think you could say in most factors and most positions in the pitch, Spa were on top today. I was a little bit disappointed with Cora, I expected a lot more from them, but on the day, you'd have to take your hats off to Spa. They've done their job, to, to, done it very, very well, you know. From, Goalkeeper right up to, to, to number 15, Tomás Lynch. They were all up for this today. I think they wanted it more than Curra, and hence the, the scoreline of 127 points, Sean. You pointed out there as well, like looking at the Curra full forward, and I mean, only for Jack Dinehy, the other scores came from John Buckley. Really, if you're in, a, in any county final, or any kind of a final, you need to have a better even spread of scores than that. Oh, uh, you do. You look a spa spread. I mean, Conor Gleeson got a point. Nilo Manny chipped him with a few points. Michael O'Donoghue got his scores. Keen Thorman got a point. Tomás Lynch got 1-1. One, one. You have to have that spread to win a county final. You know, there's no one player going to win a, 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 county, a county final on, on, on a day, you know. You've got to get the rest of the forward line in. Spa did that to great effect. I think they were well coached. I think their management course must take a, a special mention today because, I mean, that Spa team, you know, I saw them playing earlier on. That Spa team have improved now in, under Sean Martin, I think. And fair play to, 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 as you said, Willie Cahill, Mike McAuliffe and John Kelly. They've moulded this team into a real good football side. You mentioned it as well there, Kevin Healy there. Kevin Healy and Andrew Gann did very well in the middle of the field this afternoon for Spa, Ambrose. They did, and you alluded to your commentary. Not long did they do very well in the middle of the field. They broke the ball, but they worked the shot kick out very well. When Pocora double-tagged stamp, they moved uh, Hugh Odenhoe, and he moved to great effect, as indeed did Brian Russell and Owen Cronin for the kick-outs, and they win shots in a couple of teams as well. They varied their game, job. And, and uh, it, it showed it showed them the second half. They knew what they were about today. They had their homework done, and, and they executed what what they what they done on the training ground, and they put into great practice on the field. So the presentation of the trophy will be made by uh, Mr. Hafner there, the manager of Castle Island, marked over on the stand side of the Fitzgerald Stadium. The captain of the spa team, Nilo Manny, will receive the cup here, entrance the intermediate championship trophy over on the far side of the field. And I suppose a very delighted spa will indeed represent Kerry now in the Monster Intermediate Championship. I think they're out on the second Sunday, I think, in November, I think, uh, away to, I, I'm not quite sure what the draw is for the Monster Intermediate Championship, but spa will be quite happy going into it. They have that potential. They really showed it this afternoon. They had a big spread of scoring in their forwards, there's no doubt about it, and their backs really as a unit were t uh, really tight. I mean, uh, Connor, uh, um, Brian Gleeson there at corner back in outstanding game, Aidan Cahill as well, and Fergus Clifford really. You pointed out Ambrose, really there was none of the spa defence you could say was at any, any time except for the very first minute for maybe Brian Gleeson, and really that's the wrong thing to say Board to pick him out for that. Board but really, ball. they really were on top of their game, the defence. There were, yeah. There were, it was a team of entry, in fairness, from 1 to 15. I think all their players, there was no spa player beaten today. I mean, that's a, a big thing to say in a county final. And looking at the programme there as well, I mean, you have spa players. There are Damien Sullivan, Cormac Cronin that came in, Paul Russell, Adam Riley, Paul Kelleher, Shane Lynch, Pat Cronin, Kieran Hurley, there's Anthony Sullivan as well, Michael Paul Darty, all players with a big future with Spa, with Shane Finton as well, there are in the sub, Jim Morris, Paul Casey, these players, I've seen a number of them playing there at minor, lead at senior level as well, Shane Devan, Andrew Sullivan, with Michael Finnegan, Ivor Flynn, a big strength and depth in the panel as well, Ambrose, looking through the subs, they are all very good footballers, I mean, so they had plenty of strength, to bring on as well into the game today. Oh, you, you, you would have to say that, that the spa have done. They've done a lot of work in fairness, and there's a lot of youngsters there. You know, I like to see panel carrying youngsters, and they're doing that, and they're developing their youngsters. And you know, this is the start. This is a big thing for a club. Once you win a county, you know, it's easy now to get under 12s and the 14s into your pitch training and everything else. And hopefully, you know, like like you like you said with St Michael's final more. I hope Spa kick on from here now. That there's more. There's more in this year for them. You know, if, if this, when winning the county final is great. But I mean, there's another little episode to continue for them now. They've never lost a championship season in, in the intermediate. So the presentation being made over to Niall O'Mahony, captain of the Spa team. The final score again here at the County Intermediate Football Final. Spa victors here on the day here in the Fitzgerald Stadium. Spa one goal and 12 points. Cora seven points.
Main Street, where I'm sure it is there, Chip is doing this here. Nice shot. To the referee, Paul Hayes, to all his umpires, and to the staff of the Shirt Stadium, thanks for a great day. Finally, and most importantly, to the Curl football team. Look, it was a fierce, tough game, but we're very. We, we've had lots of hard games against each other over the years. You didn't get the rubber beat today. We see you've got great players with a great trees to your club, and we wish you the best in the future. Three cheers for Carl. Hey, Pip! Hey, Pip!